Why do demographics matter? Well, in a nutshell, demographics, they define us and they define our communities. And most importantly, as we've seen from the most recent census release, that uh, the Canadian demographics are changing very significantly uh, and are, will, are projected to change even more significantly in the coming years. Here's what a population or the population in Canada looks like to a demographer. So that's males on the right, females on the left, and increasing age up the axis. And you can see that in 1971, the most typical resident in Canada was about 10 years old. So the context here is a young Homer Simpson as, uh, as our prototypical boomer in 1971. If we come ahead to 1981, you can see how the profile changed. The most typical resident in Canada 10 years later was 10 years older. There's this secret rule in demography that I'll tell you guys about. Just about everybody gets older every year. It's just about because some people die, right? So by 1981, the context had changed with respect to Canadian demographics. Uh, Marge and Homer were getting out of school, getting into the labor force. So in terms of changes with respect to their life cycles, they were getting into family formation, period when Canadian housing markets boomed as well as people got out of their parental house and formed families of their own. So if we flip way ahead to 2011, we can see how the profile again has changed Canada-wide. Most typical resident now in Canada is almost 50 years old, and sort of an aging homer has become our prototypical resident in Canada. Funny thing about this profile is just what all regions in Canada share it. Big bulge around the middle, supported by a much narrower base. You get it? <laughs> Baby boom bulge. Guys, that's funny. Come on. <laughs> but, but bing, right? Yes. Okay. So anyways, I don't have any more bad jokes. That was the only, only one. So where are we going in the future? Well, there's, the, again, the profile for Canada in 2011. There's what it's going to look like by 2021 and 2031, uh, as per our forecasts, which are very similar to Statistics Canada's forecasts. And you can see the dramatic change, very significant change in all the 55-plus age groups in that age profile. And with respect to the younger age groups, between the ages of 20 and 30, actually a net decline, and not all that much growth with respect to the sort of prime working age of the life cycle in around the age of 45. How about the Lower Mainland? Are we any different here? Well, not really. There's our profile today, still that same post-World War II baby boom bulge. Where are we going in the coming years in terms of change? There's what it would look like in 21 and by 2031. And again, much, much more growth or change at the top of that age profile than at the base. We benefit a little bit in terms of that population between the ages of 35 and 45 in that we receive a lot of migration. And that migration tends to be young, so relative to Canada, it will fill out our labor force in those younger stages of the life cycle more than in other uh, communities and regions in Canada. So our new paradigm with respect to Canadian changing demography is that we are entering what's being called our third great demographic transition, one's characterized by the aging of the post-World War II boom into retirement, whatever that means. And the neat thing about this is 2011, 2012 actually marked this transition because the leading edge of the post-World War II boom, those born in, in around 46, actually celebrated their 65th birthdays. So hit that, uh, that retirement stage of the life cycle. So the one question here is, so what? What does this mean with respect to the fourth wave? Um, well, it, it means a lot, a whole bunch of different stuff. In a nutshell, what it really does mean is anything with a very strong life cycle related pattern, specifically weighted towards the older stages of the life cycle, is going to experience very dramatic change in the coming years.